My name is Laramie Head, and this summer I worked on, I looked at cellular dynamics, and more specifically, I looked at neutrophils and AKT, which is a protein within them. So, we wanted to answer the question, what was happening to these cells in an electric field? What was happening to the proteins during this? Okay, so yes, <laughs> we wanted to answer what was happening to the cells when we put them in an electric field and what's happening to the proteins within these cells. So a little bit of background, the cells that we were working with are HL60 cells and they were just cultured from a leukemia line. So we drug them to differentiate them, which takes them from being in this part of the blood cycle or blood path and brings them down here to make them behave like neutrophils. So then that gives us an idea on neutrophilic behavior. Um, so when an animal gets a wound, uh, the neutrophils start running to that wound site, and they're able to do that because of electrotaxis, which is just the migration of cells because of an electric field. So um, the wound site becomes electrically negative, and that's what stimulates the neutrophils to go to that wound site. Um, in the lab, we recreate this electrical gradient with electrolytic cells and agar bridges so that we don't electrocute the cells by just putting them in a direct current. Um, and neutrophils are important because they lead our immune system. So. so when the cell wants to move initially, it's gonna make protrusions that are made out of actin. And these protrusions kind of pull the cell along where it wants to go. So actin is considered to lead the motility of the cell. But before that can happen, the actin needs a Q. So upstream of the actin is a protein referred to as AKT, which is known as a signaling protein. And it regulates a lot of different processes in the cell, including motility. So it's currently being in, uh, observed in cells that have been immobilized so, so that we can still measure their responses to external stimuli. So the first thing we did was take a look at the AKT and see what it looked like in comparison to the actin in a cell. And so these are two videos where you can see kind of how they look differently. And here's some more videos that um, showed the dynamics a little better. Um, in the first video, I'm hoping maybe it'll get smoother as I talk. The first video um, is just a bunch of them, and you can see that we called them pancakes because they really just liked to spread out on their surface, which was kind of interesting. Um, and then in this cell in particular, the one labeled poke, there was this string. Okay, so where the image is brighter is more intense actin, by the way. Um, but so in this second video, it did this sort of poking motion. Um, you can kind of see it in one of the frames where it has like a super bright line. Um, in the smoother videos, you can see it like poke down into the cell and then retract for some reason. So we were gonna look more into that. And then in addition to that, we noticed this like sucking motion that the cell did with its AKT that you can see in the, that you could see in the third video. Um, it just pulls in little chunks of AKT, and then this Z-Stack image was created by scanning through the planes and compiling them into this three-dimensional image, and it's there so you can see what a whole cell looks like three-dimensionally. So like this little ruffle that you can see, that's the direction that the cell was trying to move in. So it's already been confirmed that electric fields direct the actin within the cell, so we wanted to know what the AKT was doing when we gave it an electric field. So in this second video is a video we took and we turned the field on at five minutes and switched it 10 minutes after that. So you can see that the intensity of the AKT aligns with the orientation of the electric field and it tries to migrate in the direction that the electric field is telling it to. So to analyze these results, we put the video through a MATLAB coding, and that coding basically took the frames and binarized the images, and then it tracked the boundaries of those cells. 
And then it took those boundaries and just basically turned it into a straight line and compiled all those boundaries into this chimo graph. Um, and you can see where I switched the electric field. And you can see that when the electric field gets turned on or switched, the AKT sort of aligns and gets directed by the electric field. And there is, if you'll notice, like a general decrease in the intensity over time. That's most likely due to photo bleaching. So I found it kind of easier to follow it backwards so you can see more. But yeah, so this shows that the electric fields are directing the intensity of the actin. So in the future, though, we would like to decouple the actin and the AKT since they're both working, obviously, to move the cell um, in the direction of the electric field, we are going to freeze, well not we, but the future studies will freeze the actin with this combination of three drugs that has been shown to freeze the actin dynamics. Um, so that way we'll be able to look at the AKT directly and see what just the AKT is doing in the electric field without being affected by the actin. I'd like to thank all of these people and thank you all for listening. <laughs> <laughs>